Hi friends, my name is Kathy Reisowitz and this is Sex and State. Today I'm going to talk about how to help men um, and my idea is AI for loneliness. So on my newsletter I've been talking a lot about men's woes um, and a little bit about potential solutions including banning occupational licensure requirements, limiting credentialism, and of course the eternal theme of abolishing gender or at least updating it to better fit macroeconomic realities and punishing men less severely for violating gender norms. And in addition to this, I have another suggestion. Let's make high quality AI companionship widely available. So my argument is basically, first, everyone is lonely, but men are lonelier than women on average. Loneliness is self-reinforcing and loneliness is dangerous to individuals and society at large. To break the cycle of loneliness, AI may be able to create a low stakes way for men to practice socializing. For instance, Entrepreneur reported in 2019 that a Japanese man virtually married a virtual singer um, who he communicated with through her hologram through Gatebox. The man is named, his last name is Kondo. And he told a Japanese newspaper that the relationship helped him feel less depressed about work and alleviated his fear of social rejection. I'll probably be thinking, reading, and writing about the intersection between AI and loneliness for a while. And right now I have a lot of questions, which include, but are not limited to, are we measuring loneliness well enough currently to definitively measure how interactions with AI will impact it later? The fact that almost 20 years after Facebook launched and we still don't know how social media impacts loneliness does not make me feel confident. The other main question I have is how do we balance for-profit AI companies incentives with human flourishing? So for example, um, advertising exists to help us to want to buy things, but in order to do that, they often advertisements often make us feel bad about ourselves, which can exacerbate loneliness. Um, one thing that I've been thinking about as well is the way that journalists are writing about AI right now. And I think this is important because the way journalists write about AI obviously impacts how people think about AI. Um, so for example, in the Entrepreneur article, uh, the journalists seem to kind of subtly suggest that the fact that Gatebox stopped supporting the software that enabled Kondo to speak to his wife um, highlighted the difference between AI, uh, human, marriages and human-human marriages, but when you think about it, uh, there's nothing more human than losing a spouse or being lost to a spouse. It is, as they say, uh, uh, as inevitable as taxes. Another example is Parker Malloy, who I love, wrote a recent article, and this is very meta because I'm critiquing her and she's critiquing uh, the media's representations of AI, but um, in the article she claims AI programs lack agency and urges journalists, please stop presenting AI chatbots to your audiences if they are sentient, autonomous beings. My problem with this is that we don't really understand what sentience and agency are, like as concepts. We don't understand what they are and aren't, and whether and to what extent humans have them or could be said to have them. Um, if we don't understand what these things are, how can we confidently proclaim that AI does or doesn't have them? To me, it seems like a tautological argument at its core. These things make us human, AI is a human, and so AI can't have them. But we can't definitively say animals lack sentience and agency, nor can we definitively say all humans have sentience and agency. So it just seems like an overconfident statement about something that we don't fully understand yet. Another example is a New Yorker article on AI therapy where the author writes, the treatment of mental illness requires imagination, insight, and empathy. Traits that AI can only pretend to have. Well, what's the functional difference between pretending to have these traits and having them? I can't functionally pretend to have Im imagination or insight. I mean, I guess I could pretend to have them by literally repeating what someone tells me to say when they tell me to say it. But AI isn't really doing that. Um, I think what AI is doing when it pretends to have uh, imagination, insight, and empathy is much more like what you and I do when we demonstrate it. At some point, someone demonstrated these things to us 
and we learned from them when, where, and how to display it to others. Sometimes I use the exact phrasing that I've learned from others, but sometimes I come up with my own. But anything new that I invent, whether words or concepts, is still based on what I learned from other people. And I don't understand how that's functionally different from what AI is doing. And I think this all goes back to the Westworld question. If something is otherwise indistinguishable for, from a human, but is made rather than born, is it human? And when we have artificial wombs, functionally making people rather than giving birth to them, will those people be human? My feeling is that the category of human is at core more aesthetic than scientific. That is, we give humans more rights and care than animals or algorithms, not because there's some practical reason or clear empirical dividing line between these categories, but because we feel that humans are special, which is fine, I guess. I don't share that aesthetic, if I'm honest. I used to, but I don't anymore. And it's fine if you do. That's the whole point of aesthetics. They're not right or wrong, they just are. And they can lead to things that we can accurately classify as right or wrong. But I just want people to be honest about the distinction. If you don't think AI is or could ever be human because human is a special category to you, which necessarily excludes AI, then just admit that. But don't pretend there's some scientific, rational, empirical, objective quality that separates the two if there isn't one. Or if there is one, but you can't define it. Anyway, my babies. That's enough about AI and loneliness for today. But if you have any recommendations on content on the topic that I should consume, please let me know. And for more of this kind of content, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to um, find the links to uh, things that I'm referencing, then uh, check out the link in the description to my newsletter. It's called Sex and the State. It's awesome. And thanks for watching.